welcome to the Church in the Gardens this Sunday morning. Whoever you are and wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. We ask visitors to please take a moment and place your name and contact information on a visitor card and put it in the offering plate um, at the back of the church or you can give it to a greeter. If you are new to the neighborhood, we are in a community that requires a parking pass, so if you don't have one in your car, please get one and place it there. And if you have a minute also, remember to silence your cell phone to be in communion with God and no one else today while we're in worship together. Um, God bless you as together we experience God's life-giving word. <clears throat> So we have a few announcements. On Sunday, October 16th, we're gonna be celebrating a baptism in the rite of confirmation as part of our worship service. On the 22nd, we have Open House New York that Betty Chen has been working very hard to pull together and happy that we've got some volunteers and it should be a nice um, experience for people in the community to get to know our church. Also on the 23rd, there will be um, the rite of confirmation. Um, of our 2022 class as part of the worship service. And on October 30th, a new confirmation class will begin. Um, and if you're interested, please contact Reverend Fred or Rachel Labou. On Tuesday, November 1st, there's going to be an All Saints Day Jazz Service of Remembering, um, come for music, meditation, and remembering. Um, there's an announcement also from Jim. Friendly reminder, the, uh, the drive is next Sunday, Sunday, October 9th. It'll be in the same uh, venue, Community House Gym, from 9.30 to 3.30. Uh, there are flyers outside. You can either walk in or make an appointment. I, I should also note that Richard has posted it on Facebook, various Facebook sites, and Yang has posted it on Eventbrite. So uh, we urge you to come out if you're able to. Very quickly, the ground rules, you have to be between 16 and 76. If you're 76 or over, you need a note for your doctor. And we hope we get as many people as possible. Last time we broke our record. Let's see if we can uh, break, uh, I think the record was 61, like Roger Maris and Aaron Judge. So let's see if we can surpass that next Sunday. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Um, and please, as a congregation, let us pray for Rosa Augusto, Ophelia Banks, Hannah Basus, Rhonda Chambers, Constance Radu, Ann Sandiger, Dora Shia, and Reverend Willie Salmon. <laughs> May add my welcome to the Church in the Gardens on this New Members Sunday and Holy Communion Sunday, October 2nd, 2022. A special welcome to those who are worshiping with us for the first time and to all 
on Zoom and our YouTube channel. As you've already heard, whoever you are, wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. God bless us as we gather on this special day, and so let us pray. O oh God of hope and joy and new life, bless our time this morning as we gather old friends and new members of your family to worship, pray, and offer praise, and to hear, to meditate on, and to share your word for us, body, mind, and spirit. Be with all of us as we experience your call to life and life abundant, and let everybody say, Amen. 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 Please stand and join me in our call to worship. Keep this in mind. And always have hope. We are never cut off from the steadfast love of the Lord. God's mercies never end. They are new every morning. Our opening hymn is number 64 in the Pilgrim Hymnal, All Creatures of Our God and King. And a little caveat, we will be singing Alleluia in praise of O oh, Praise Him. And in verse 4, everyone in place of all ye men. <laughs>
join me in the prayer of confession as printed in your bulletin, I will begin. Creator, we disfigure your world. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Redeemer, we reject your salvation and take your freedom from others. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Giver of life, we too often choose the ways of death and destruction. Lord, have mercy. Be with us in this brief time of silent reflection. And be with us as we sing. Siblings in Christ, the God of creation and recreation forgives us and calls us to freedom from guilt and shame and fear. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Please share with one another a sign of peace. Peace of the Lord.
trying to catch deacons and new members among the choir before they leave us. I want to invite new members and uh, call out their names. Jerry Hahn is here already. Stephen Arrigo, Christina Gropper, please start coming up. You know who you are. Uh, Noriko Iwamoto, Susan Cull, Elizabeth Scaritza, Novi... To hero. 
Have I missed anybody? I know of some I've missed, and I'm about to get to that. Joining us on Zoom are Charlene Apsel and Ira Apsel. Oh, I haven't called out Rob's name yet. Uh, one of our deacon's representatives along with Yang. Where's Yang? Yeah. Yang. <laughs> <laughs> You're hiding him. <laughs> and, and, I'm gonna call out my name because I'm joining the church. And I'm gonna call out uh, my wife's name, Reverend Kirsten Weidman, because she's joining the church. Now, Kirsten's not able to be with us this morning for reasons that most of you know. <laughs> running her own worship service at, the, at Grace Lutheran down the street. So, welcome to all. Uh, Charlene and Ira, especially, we know you're with us on Zoom, and Kirsten is with us in spirit. Dear siblings in Christ, we rejoice in the pilgrimage of faith which has brought each of you, each of us, to this time and place. We give thanks for God's presence in your life's pilgrimage, and for everyone who has supported you on the way, we celebrate your presence in this household of faith. Our church and its bylaws indicates public reaffirmation of faith or public confession of faith as the means by which to indicate your desire to join. As written in the beginning of our mission statement, the Church in the Gardens is a community congregational church whose cornerstone is the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I ask you, and myself, and Ira, and Charlene, and Kirsten, do you profess to make Jesus Christ your cornerstone and follow his words? You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength and your neighbor as yourself. If so, please say, we do with God's help. We do, we do with, with God's, God's help. help. I'd like now to invite Yang and Rob to read for us. I understand you're gonna share a microphone to read for us from the rest of the mission statement of the Church in the Gardens. As a recipient of God's redeeming love in Christ and empowered by the Holy Spirit, we are called to glorify God. Bear witness to God's creative, redeeming, and sanctifying action in the world. Nurture each person in the Christian faith and affirm the worth and dignity of each individual. Therefore, we covenant to uphold each person in their walk in Christ and to do deeds of faithful ministry in the world. We do all this in thankful celebration of the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. You have indicated, what's your? <laughs> That's the pastor's job. Oh, I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Now, you, we, Charlene and Ira and Kirsten, have indicated your desire to join in this community of faith, and we have indicated our desire to welcome you. And so I ask each of you, do you promise to participate in the mission of the Church in the Gardens, sharing regularly in the worship of God and in the ministry of this church as we serve each other, the community, and the world? If so, please say, we do with God's help. We do with God's help. And now, Church in the Gardens, let us express our welcome to our new members and affirm our life together in Christ with the words printed in your bulletin. Let us say together, we welcome you with joy. We covenant to walk with you in Christ and together to do deeds of faithful ministry in the world. And so let us pray. O oh God, by the power of your Holy Spirit, bless these, your children, who join our community of faith today, and bless all of us. Cause us to continue to grow together in knowledge and love of you, and in all that we say and do to be witnesses of your love. And let all of the beloved community of the Church in the Garden say together, Amen. Amen. And now one more thing before our music. I'm sorry, I didn't let you know this. 
Our Board of Deacons has acquired, do you want to tell us what these are, Yang? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Please. Our Board of Deacons has acquired wonderful uh, Bibles to give as a gift to each of our new members. These are special edition presentation Bibles from the United uh, Church of Christ. They include information about the UCC denomination and also include a presentation page inside Elizabeth. with Reverend Fred signature. We wish you <laughs> may this very special Bible your best Thanks, friend Susan. who will lead you uh, to the most joyous and uh, abundant and fruitful life. Thank you. And, and Charlene. <laughs> yeah. Stephen. And Ira, okay. Do you want it? No, you just put it there okay. with Charlene's. Uh, Ira Noriko. 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 And we got and Jerry. Jerry, there we go. Okay. They didn't give me one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, blessings. Hey, how about a word and then. <coughs> All right, blessings. Thank you. Our first lesson comes to us from Habakkuk chapter 1 verses 2 through 4 and chapter 2 verses 1 through 4. The oracle that the prophet Habakkuk saw, the prophet's complaint. O oh Lord, how long shall I cry for help? And will you not listen or cry to you? Violence, and will you not save? Why do you make me see wrongdoing and look at trouble? Destruction and violence are before me. Strife and contention arise. So the law becomes slack and justice never prevails. The wicked surround the righteous. Therefore, judgments come forth perverted. God's reply to the prophet's complaint. I will stand at my watch post and station myself on the rampart. I will keep watch to see what he will say to me and what he will answer concerning my complaint. Then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision, make it plain on tablets so that a runner may read it. For there is still a vision for the appointed time. It speaks of the end and does not lie. If it seems to tarry, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. Look at the proud. Their spirit is not right in them, but the righteous live by their faith. The gospel lesson comes to us from the book of Luke. Luke chapter 19, verses 1 through 10. He entered Jer Jericho and was passing through it. A man was there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, he could not because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him because he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down and was happy to welcome him. All who saw it began to grumble and said, 
he has gone to be the guest of one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. Here ends the reading. The word of God. Thanks be to God. As we move into the time of the sermon, I want to invite all kids who are with us to join Miss Rachel and our volunteer angels down in the Sunday school. Uh, parents and caregivers are welcome uh, to join or stay here as you will. And as they're making our way off, I want to make an observation. They're here. We have bulletins. I think this is the first Sunday since I've been around that we have a bulletin. And as I look at this bulletin, and as I look at this bulletin at this point in the service, it reminds me of when I was a senior minister out in the San Francisco Bay Area at Hillcrest Congregational Church. Every time we'd come around to a service like this, when there was a lot going on in the service, the chair of the worship and music committee would remind me that there's a lot going on in the service and <clears throat> keep it brief, Pastor. <laughs> and just to underline the point, at this part in the worship service, you'd look, I'd look, you'd look, and wouldn't see sermon. There'd be a word there like homily or reflection or sermonette. <laughs> just a little reminder to keep it brief. And uh, in fact, I am going to aim to keep it brief. Uh, today. At first, where's Alan Maurer? I want to thank the chair of our worship and music committee, Alan, for not doing that. We, in fact, have service. So I could talk on and on, but I will, I will keep things focused uh, this morning. And in particular, I want to keep focus on what we've just experienced, uh, receiving new members and affirming our life together. As we heard, our mission statement begins, the church in the gardens is a community congregational church whose cornerstone is the Lord Jesus Christ. I like that. That's good, sturdy, architectural language. I think Jesus himself would like it, and I'm very certain his earthly father would like it. We learn in Sunday school and we hear in sermons that Joseph, the father of Jesus, was a carpenter. I got nothing against carpenters, but I don't know why they translate the biblical word that way. The biblical word is tectone, and you can hear tect in our word architect, which means chief builder. Now, I'm not going to get into it. If there are any engineers in the house, I know a lot of builders think that architects don't know nothing about how to build. That's a different matter. But the word means chief builder, so tect is a builder. Joseph, the earthly father of Jesus, was a builder. Like any, I realize I'm, I'm going into a sexist place now, but let me do it to make the point. Any son of a tect back in the day would learn something about building and would probably be expected to carry on the family business. That's a whole other thing to get us into Jesus' story. But the point for this sermon is Jesus and Joseph would appreciate the language in our mission statement about our Lord Jesus Christ being the cornerstone of this church. I also like to think that the, uh, I got Rob McKay right in front of me who could talk to us and others of you could about this. Grossvener Atterbury, right, the great architect of so many structures in the gardens, including this building. I hope he'd appreciate that language about Christ being the cornerstone of our church. And I very much expect that the prophet Habakkuk, and thank you, we didn't talk a moment about how to pronounce that name, 
thank you for how you said it, the prophet Habakkuk would appreciate this. Halfway through our lesson, he writes about keeping watch. We think he has in mind keeping watch for God through praying and meditating within the confines of the temple, another beautiful edifice built to the glory of God, just like this one that we call our own and that we mean to use for the glory of God. So I get it. Christ is our cornerstone. We've got a beautiful building for worshiping and learning and celebrating and singing praises. More importantly, more importantly than all of that, we've got beautiful and great people and beautiful and great practices and traditions in place for being God's people and for doing God's ministry and mission through our church. I love it. But... What are we all about? And how do we know it? And how do we let others know it? Habakkuk gives us a start. According to Habakkuk, God tells him, write the vision down. Make it plain on tablets so that a runner would see it. I think if God were alive today, God might say to us, Put it up on a billboard. Keep it simple so that someone's speeding down Ascan. Not that I'm condoning speeding down Ascan in an automobile or even a bicycle or certainly not on one of those scooters that make no noise and run me over almost every day of the week. I'm getting almost run over by those things. So that someone speeding down Ascan can read it. I like to think, and here I'm talking like one of the new members, because I am one of the new members. I like to think, fellow new members, that those who came before us heard this call of God to the prophet. And I like to think that you and I now will help keep watch and help put into action all that we are, all that we stand for, all that we do as a community of faith whose cornerstone is the Lord Jesus Christ. I like to think, to quote the rest of our mission statement, that as recipients of God's redeeming love in Christ and empowered by the Holy Spirit, we all together will indeed follow the call to glorify God, to bear witness to God's creative, redeeming, and sanctifying action in the world, and to nurture each other in the Christian faith to affirm the worth and dignity of everyone. Can I have an amen? Amen. Oh, amen. All right. And so as Habakkuk stood watch, and so as Zacchaeus, who we heard about in our gospel lesson, who did everything in his power to see Jesus face to face and so welcome the love of Christ into his life and into how he lived, I hope that we all together as the church in the gardens live into all that our mission statement calls us to, including this kind of bottom line conclusion that we heard. Therefore, we covenant to uphold each person in their walk in Christ and to do deeds of faithful ministry in the world. Fair enough? Are you with me? Uh, let's say it so people on Zoom can hear it. All right, all right. I hope and pray and I look forward to all that we do together to forward the good news of Christ's love in our own lives and in the world around us and let everybody say amen, amen. is number 287 in the Pilgrim Hymnal. Here, O oh my Lord, I see thee face to face.
remain standing as you're willing and able. Let us pray. O God of life and new life, O God of faith and faithfulness, O God of ministry and mission, we thank you for every way you call us to new life in you. We thank you for every way you call us to life together in you, to live out together your call for mission and ministry in the world. And we thank you especially for our new members and for every way that they and we together are called to do and to be church. We pray for this church and for all of our partners in ministry as together we experience and give testimony to your love and wisdom and justice in the world. And we pray for all churches and all religious institutions and religious leaders that they would give voice to and put into action your love and care and mercy for all. For all leaders and all people, that they would be moved to live and act in ways that make for peace and wholeness and justice. We pray for the people of Ukraine and for all who are suffering from hatred and violence. We pray for the people of Puerto Rico and Cuba and Florida and the Carolinas who have been harmed by recent storms and flooding, and for all who are dealing with the ravages of severe weather and climate change. For all essential workers, for all first responders, for all who work for our health and safety. And we pray for the health and safety of all people. And for our own church family, O oh God, we pray for Rosa, Charlene, Ira, Philia, Hannah, Rhonda, Connie, Ann, Dora, Reverend Willie, and for all recovering from illness and injury. We pray for our new member, Christina, and her family, and all mourning the loss recently of her father, John Preussner. We pray for all who are grieving. All other prayers, O oh God, we bring to you as we hold them in silence or as we call them out aloud now. Hear all these prayers, O oh God, and hear us as we pray together, just as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
as we enter into a time of offering on this new members Sunday and Holy Communion Sunday we remember that God gives us life sustains us in life and in all the ways that make for life and calls us to ever fuller life in relationship to God each other and the whole of creation we give for ourselves and we give for others we give to help make God's good news active in our own lives and in the world. Please give to the mission and ministry of the church in the garden. Gracious and giving God, we bring our tithes and offerings to you this day and pray as we give them that you will kindle in us a deeper faith and a stronger commitment. We acknowledge that some of us have found our way back to you on our own. Others have lived into a faith that surrounded us from the time we were born, lived out in parents, grandparents, siblings, and spouses. However this faith found its way into our hearts or into our DNA, Help us to kindle it to flame, that the world might be set on fire with your love and compassion. In Christ we pray. Amen. At the church in the gardens, all are welcome to receive Holy Communion. 
Those on Zoom, now is the time, if you haven't already, to set aside a piece of bread or substitute and a cup of juice or substitute. And now is the time for our communion service to begin to distribute the communion elements to those in the sanctuary. As you receive them here, simply hold them or keep them close until we come to the time when I invite you to partake. This is the joyful feast of the people of God, called by Christ. We are nurtured, body and soul, for life with God now, in and for the world, and unto eternity. As the elements are being distributed, we begin with the words in your bulletin. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right to give our thanks and praise, most loving God, through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, the firstborn from the dead, the pioneer of our salvation, who is with us always, one of us, yet from the heart of God. Through Christ you gather us, newborn in your spirit, a people after your own heart. Therefore, with saints, with martyrs, apostles, and prophets, with all those who make their way with you, we joyfully praise you and say together, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of mercy and power and life, earth and sea and sky and all that live, Declare your glory. All glory to you, giver of life, for all of creation, and for Jesus Christ, the one perfect offering for the world. Empower us in our celebration of Holy Communion with your Holy Spirit. Feed us with your life, and fire us up with your love and justice. Make us one in the body of Christ with all who share your gifts of love. Amen. Amen. And so we know that it was on the night in which he was betrayed or handed over that Jesus gathered all who would follow to a meal. And at that meal, he took up the bread and he gave thanks to God and he blessed it and he gave it to all saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. And after they had eaten, we're told, and please don't eat yet, we're told after they had eaten that he took up the cup in the same way, gave thanks to God and blessed it, and gave it for all to drink, saying, take and drink, this is the cup of the new covenant shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this to remember me. And so we remember and as we spoke about at the confirmation class just the other day, that idea of remembering has so many meanings for us. In the Hebrew idiom, you walk into the future always looking back and remembering who you are and whose you are, God's. As I was saying the words of institution, you've heard that part. He broke the bread in our language, to remember is to put back together as we live as the body of Christ in and for our world. And in our hymn today, we sang about seeing God face to face in that great edifice, the temple in Jerusalem back in the day. There was a special altar set aside for the bread of remembrance. And in seeing that bread, you see the face of God. So for we Christians, in remembering Christ and all Christ did and does for us, we see the face of God. And so now, sisters and brothers, I ask us to receive. Please take and eat the body of Christ, the bread of life.
invite you to please take and drink the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Now let us pray together. The prayer of thanksgiving is found in your bulletin. I will begin. O living and giving God, we thank you for inviting us to your heavenly feast. May we who have been fed at Christ's table be blessed and bless others with your love and grace. Amen. Our last hymn is number 258 in our sing hymnal, the green one at the end of your pews. Let us talents and tongues employ. the benediction, let me invite us, and I want to make sure I'm inviting us to the right place, to coffee and fellowship in the lounge. Do I have that right? So follow others if you don't know where it is. Mm -hmm. Kind of make your way through the building over in that direction. And now, as you and as we together move into following God's call to live and live with God in the world, let us receive the ancient blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May God's face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you and the whole world peace. Amen. Amen. Amen.